Hello, Greg from Balloon Market here and welcome to BMTV Business. This week we are so lucky to be joined by an award-winning business coach that has helped hundreds of businesses grow and he's also helped us. A few years ago we were in a situation that we needed some coaching and uh, Kevin came and uh, helped us. So Kevin Stansfield, business coach, welcome. Thank you, Greg. Um, Good to be here. Tell us a little bit more before we start and talk about business and what people should do and shouldn't do. Tell us a little bit more about you, how you became a coach, what, what, and what okay. you do. So my, my background was accountancy, uh, but before that, both my parents had their own businesses. So my father had a sign business, uh, my mum had a printing business, mum's business started in a front room, uh, and I, I was sort of joined her as child labour. <laughs> uh, if you remember back then, you used to do printing with little lead uh, letters. I can't remember that far back. back. Well, it was a long way back. <laughs> and uh, so my little hands were very good at holding the typesetting. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't spell for toffee, but uh, <laughs> um, so we started that in the front room, then that grew into the garage, and then that grew to a, a, a premises. Uh, my father bought a business off a man in a pub, uh, as, you, as you do. So he had a very successful job and he left that because he, he wasn't going any further yeah. in his career. And he, he was sort of uh, early 40s and thought he wanted to do something different. So there's, there's two different ways that people start businesses, you know, from an idea that grows from your, your basically your bedroom or your front room. Somebody buys into a business. Uh, some people come into business because they're made redundant and they carry on doing the job that, you know, so a plumber is made redundant and starts a plumbing job. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is to understand why you're getting into business. You know, mm -hmm. what, what's the drive from that? Um, I went on the career of being a chartered accountant, was in practice, got to the age of 28. My goal was to become a partner in, in the firm. Mm -hmm. And it was there. It was I was ready to sign the piece of paper to say, you know, you're now a partner of a, of a small uh, practice. And I sort of looked at it and thought, I don't want to do this. You know, for some reason, something inside me said, yeah. I can't see myself in the future being here. Yeah. So I decided not to do that. I gave that my, my career, you know, this, this was my dream at the time. I gave that up to go and work for one of my clients. I became a, f a finance director for them, grew their business to, or helped them grow their business to four million in about four years. Then got involved with a Dutch company, uh, doing similar things with other businesses. Grew those to about 36 million, employing about 400 people. Wow. Uh, and had a fantastic journey of learning how to build and scale up businesses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's always better when you do it with somebody else's money, yeah. <laughs> because I reckon we probably blew about 10 million in things that we did wrong. Wow. Uh, just, you know, but it's somebody else's money, so it's fine. Yeah, you know, just yeah. keep spending that. When it's your own money, I've learned it's, it's a completely different kettle of fish. Yeah. And then I bumped into Action Coach uh, some 12 years ago. Went to see a guy called Brad Sugars, who was the founder. Uh, and this guy was an inspiration. He sort of, you know, really, you know, blew me away with the simplicity of the steps it takes to build a business. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I loved it so much, as old Remington said, you know, I, I bought into the company. Yeah. Um, and I've been coaching sort of uh, for the last 12 years, helping you know, pretty much myself, local uh, sort of South Hampshire businesses, uh, but we've got coaches around the world. There's about a thousand coaches in 65 countries around the world within the Action Coach franchise. Yeah. Uh, and that's my passion is, is helping business owners just like yourself yeah. who want to grow, want to take their business forwards, but have just maybe struggling in some way. Maybe it's ideas, maybe it's you know, too busy working in the business, not working on it to help them pull them out to grow the business so that it can actually achieve what they want to yeah. achieve. You, you really helped us. I think people come to coaches for different reasons. And at the time, was it, it must have been six years ago, something like yeah, that. Yeah. And we, Rachel, we'd had our second child. Rachel was struggling to re-engage in the business. And it really, really helped us work together as a team yeah. to, to grow the business. So. And certainly, you know, husband and wife businesses, you know, we, we do a lot with family businesses. Mm. Because there's a different dynamic, there's a very strong connection, trust, reliability, mm. working together. 
but what you lack is that outside reflection yeah. you know and you you can have a certain conversation with your other half you know or a family member but sometimes you know you you need a third party within that to to bring that sense of realism and what you do what you do and the big thing with coaching is you don't know what you don't know yeah so oh, exactly. unless you're continually learning new stuff you, all you're doing is applying the same knowledge and yeah. you know one thing for me is you know, in that first year of running a business you learn so much the problem is after that a lot of people then just repeat that learning mm. over and over again so it's, it's a bit like going to kindergarten mm. doing your first year and never getting out of kindergarten yeah unless yeah. you go and learn some higher level knowledge then all you can do is reapply the same knowledge um, and if you look in sport you know a top sports person you'd look at them if they didn't have a coach you'd think they're crazy yeah because they're at the and these are not bad people these are at the top of their game but they see they need an external person to actually help them go to the next level and that's why i got into coaching was i saw a need within business people it's not a sign of weakness to get a coach in sport and it's definitely not a sign of weakness in business to get a coach it's somebody that's going to drive you to that next level it's funny because we've found that the only people that see value in coaching are the people that have coaching yeah. um, and people that don't have coaching don't see any value yeah. in it. And it, it, uh, once you've convinced people that, hey, coaching is a good thing, it's, it, you, you see that value. Well, once, once, because people, you know, people don't want to coach. Mm. You know, you know, what they want is the results mm -hmm. that they, c they can get if they have a coach. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I don't care how they get there. If they get it, if they're exactly where they want to be with their business, it's providing them everything, their perfect life, then fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're not there, yeah, and you haven't done it yet, yeah. you've got to ask yourself a question, well, what's going to be different next year? Yeah. Doing the same old thing, you know, expecting a different result, as Einstein said, is the first sign of insanity. Yeah. yeah. So you're yeah, bringing an outsider, whether it's a mentor or a coach, or, you know, sometimes it's a psychotherapist is needed. Yeah. Uh, but some external body is going to bring some additional knowledge, some additional ways of thinking into the business. I mean, for me, when we were together, it was more the the being held accountable because when you're your own boss you're not reporting to anybody no, no I, i'm the boss i can yeah. do whatever i like yeah. and and that's it yeah. and then of course it can get well i've got no boss to report to i'll do that tomorrow and that's that's what really helped me and i've tried to continue what we we did there whipping myself effectively yeah. um but still not not as good you'll, as you'll as never push to yourself you know as hard mm. You know, that, the coach is there to get that extra 10, 20% out of you yeah. that you can't do on your own. Yeah. Now, if, if, you, if you're working forwards you know, on your own, great. You know, but if you want that extra 10%, then yeah. you, you do need that little bit of help. Yeah. We have people that are in their startup phase, so maybe on their own. And the big thing when you're on your own is you know, you, you've lost that support network. Yeah. So it's yeah. They say that running your business is one of the loneliest things you'll ever do. You know, even in big organisations, I, I deal, deal with a couple of CEOs, you know, of, and they, they're employing hundreds of people. Yeah. But they've got no one to talk to. Mm. You know, they can't talk to their, you know, their sort of fellow managers because yeah. it's a sign of weakness. They can't go to the shareholders, their bosses, because you know, actually, I've employed you to do this job, yeah. and you're yeah. saying you can't do it. So the coach allows them to have that person just to talk things through and often you know a coaching session is me listening for an hour yeah, yeah. and then saying well, okay what are you going to do about it i think most people do know that they know what they have to do exactly but they they just need that that push so that, that's i mean a lot of our our viewers and our customers they're they're smaller businesses they are one-man yep. bands they're husband and wife they're small teams um Thinking of those sort of businesses, what advice would you, you give to those sort of small businesses? Say that have been, have, have just started, what, what would be your, your key advice? Once you've got the idea, you know, so some of these people are, yeah, they've, they've probably got into the balloon industry, you know, because it's something they've, you know, probably by accident. Mm. Yeah, I, I would guess, you know, probably they don't wake up one day, I'm gonna be a, a balloon entrepreneur and yeah. rule the world. With, but, yeah, they've got into it because they've done something, they've enjoyed it, they've been good at it, they've made a bit of money at it. Yeah. Okay, so, so, that, so that's, that's important to, you know, we wanna keep that passion for what you do. Once you've got through that phase and you've said, right, I, I can do this, then really th the next stage is start with the end in mind. Mm. Okay, it's very 
easy just to get onto the hamster wheel and start running around the hamster wheel and becoming busy. Yeah. Okay, busy, 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 doing, 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 doing. And then you wake up five years later and you think, actually, I'm still standing where I, yeah. Yeah, I was four, you know, four, 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 four or five years ago. So the first thing is do something you're passionate about, do something that you're good at and do something you can make money at. Okay, those, those are the three fundamentals. Okay. What you're passionate about, what you can make money at, and what you're good at. Yeah. Okay, so if you do that, then you'll be happy doing what you do. Next phase then is, okay, so think forward one, two, three, four, five, 10, 20 years, as long, as far forward as you possibly can, and say, right, what does this business look like in the future? What am I trying to build? Okay, so if I, if I was a house builder, and you came to me and said, I want to build a house, I wouldn't suddenly start laying bricks. Yeah. Okay, if you said I want a five course meal, I wouldn't run into the kitchen and just stick some food on the hob. Yeah. You know, I'd go, okay, so what sort of house do you want to build? What's the house got to do? You know, what sort of meal do you want? What's the, what's the occasion? Yeah, I'd need to know what you're trying to achieve. Then I'd go, right, okay, well, I know a recipe for that. I'll follow yeah. the recipe. If you want to build a house, I'll create the plan for that. And then all we then do is action the plan. Yeah. So the, the key to this, if I can dr yeah, yeah, draw on, on your board here, is you know the first thing you've got to have is a dream, okay? Because you know a business can be whatever you want it to be. Mm. You know, you were talking, we were having a chat earlier, and you were saying about the guy who started Nike in, yeah. in the 1960s. You know, he had a dream. Ray Kroc, when he started McDonald's, had a dream. Steve Jobs, when he started Apple, had a dream. Mm. Now, the difference between those guys and probably most of your viewers is their dreams were here, yeah, and you, most of us' dreams are down yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but we've got to have this dream of the future of what we want it to be. And the other part of the, the dream here is not only the business, but what does the business need to give you? Mm. Okay, because a business is really just a vehicle to give you what you want in life. So part of that dream should be what do you want personally? Mm. You know, what house do you want to live in? What cars do you want to drive? What holidays do you want to go on? You know, what do you want to leave as a legacy for your children? The, the more clarity you have around this, yeah, then the easier it is to do the next stage, which is set some goals. Mm -hmm. Okay, so th this is sort of, you know, five, 10 years. Yeah. Okay, this is you know, probably one year. Yeah. So this year, yeah, what is my goal for my business to move towards my dream? Yeah. Okay, so we're starting now, we've talked about smart goals, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time frames. The biggest thing with these is time frame. Mm. You know, a, a goal without or yeah, a goal without a time frame is just still a dream. Yeah. yeah. So you start to bring some clarity. And do you know the reason why most people don't set goals? Why? They're worried they're not gonna achieve them? Exactly. I'm not yeah. going to achieve it. Yeah. So don't set a goal and then I can't fail. Yeah. Okay. Now, one of the big things in business, and anyone you talk to that's been successful in business, is they fail. Yeah. Yeah? They fail more times and quicker than anybody else. That's the way to do it. So fail, fail fast. Yeah. Fail fast. And uh, there's a lovely book by Mike, uh, Malcolm Gladwell called Fail Forward. Yeah. You know, make a mistake, learn from the mistake. Yeah. You know, we've got to learn. Yeah, and that's really where the next stage comes in here is we've got to learn. Okay, so you know, you don't know what you don't know. You know, what got you here isn't gonna get you to there. We've got to keep on learning. And I know you, we've talked to you, you know, you you got you into audio books. Hugely, uh, yeah. You know, so listening, reading, going to courses, spending time around other successful people, learn from people who've been where you want to go to. Yeah. You know, it's much easier to learn through a book than learning through your own mistakes. Yeah. I said to you, when I, in the businesses that I was with, I was lucky enough to make loads of expensive mistakes with other people's money. Yeah, yeah. When it's your own business, it's your own money, oh no, I mustn't make a mistake, I don't want to do that because I might lose. I think one of the things that you've talked about it there is that um, when you said, just where do you want to be? And when we worked together, I can't remember what we said, two years, three years, where do you see the business in three yeah. years? and wrote it down i actually found and then typed it up i actually found the document Did you? Um, Fantastic. Uh, a while ago so yep. it was six years ago and even though it was a two three year goal and we still not achieved everything no. however 80 percent of what we wrote down 
we've we've got being yeah. in in the unit, being the size of the team that we are, and and all the rest of it. And it's like we did say uniform team, but we decided that people quite like in, wearing their own clothes, which surprised me. Yeah. But um, that was one of the things. Yeah. And had we not written that down, had I not had a unit of this size, for instance, in my head. Would we ever have moved here? I don't know. I don't know. So I, I thought that was really, it's, really powerful. I mean, it, what we've got to understand is all, all of this is tapping into our brains. Mm. You know, our brains are an amazingly powerful machine. Mm. Okay, and we still don't really understand it. Neuroscience has moved forward so much in the last ten years with MRI scans and things like that, but we still really don't understand fully how the brain works. Yeah. But what we do know is that you know when you set your mind to something. Yeah, it will find a way. Yeah, you know, there's certain there's, if you make those neural connections, if you carry on learning new stuff, you apply that to goals. Mm. Okay, then we do achieve. And if yeah. you if you really looked at your your life, all of the goals that are most important to you, yeah, you will have achieved. Yeah. Okay, it's just that what we're not good at is once we get comfortable, we're okay. You know, we're doing all right. We then have a fear of loss. So I don't want to lose that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we don't set stretching goals. We don't move forward. So it's a bit like a sports star who wins their first tournament and goes, oh, well, I don't want to lose again, and then never enters another competition. Yeah, well, yeah. why would you do that? Yeah. You know, yeah. Sport is nice and easy, because actually, when you, if you do lose, it's just, you know it's part of the game. In business, you know, we have this fear of, of loss. Um, so you'd say goals. Us back. Sorry. Yep. You'd say goals. Written goals, written goals is something that yeah. we should all be doing. Yeah. And how often would you say we should we should do that? Every year, every six months? Should we change them? I mean, I would say you, you you're right. At least once a year, you've got to be setting your your big personal goals. Right. What do I want to achieve in the next twelve months? So it's my fiftieth next year. Okay. Um, so it sneaks sneaks up on you. Yeah. I know I don't look fifty. It, not at all. Okay. Um, not at all. So. But it's so 50 years, so I'm thinking, right, and it's my 25th wedding anniversary as well. So I'm thinking, right, what do I want to do next year? So I've come up with a concept of 50 for 50. Yeah. So I want to do 50 things that I've never done before yeah, over the course of next year. So one a week for 50 weeks. Um, and I've, I'm trying to come up with some inspiration. What sort of things? Uh, well, one, one is to get a tattoo. Oh, really? <laughs> which I've, 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 I've always been against tattoos. But I just thought, like, I'm 50 years old. I can get a small tattoo somewhere where it's nice and discreet. So you're going to be action coach. But <laughs> yeah, maybe not that sad. Uh, but so, so a tattoo, I, I want to do a bungee jump. It's been on my list of things to do for a long time. So, so I've got to go and find somewhere to do a bungee jump. So just things like not, I don't want to do anything that's going to cost a lot of money. You know, it's not about mm. that. It's just about, you know, I'm 50 years old, you know, and there's some things in my life that I haven't done. Mm. Let's do 50 things, uh, hopefully raise a bit of money for charity as well, you know, get, get them sponsored and, um, you know, so that I gain and a, and a charity can gain as well. Fantastic. So, but that, that's the important for, for, set it, for setting goals. Learning, constant learning, you know, mm. keep learning because you've just got to keep, a, a, learning new stuff, but also it's activity within the brain. If the brain is active, you know, then it will solve problems. It's, yeah. a, it's a problem solving missile, your brain. Yeah. So you keep feeding it with new stuff, then it will it will grow and help you grow. And this is why a lot of our stuff we do, uh, I said to you the other day, we, we've we started a book club. So we get people to read a book, you know, uh, every other month mm -hmm. uh, and then come and discuss the book yeah. because you learn from your own learnings, you learn from what other people do. It stimulates the brain. It heightens the neural connections that are going on. And so when you come back, you, f you feel far more alive mm. and, and able to achieve more. I'm, I'm currently listening to a book by a guy called Rob Moore. I've never heard of him before, came across him on Audible. And it's a lot of the same stuff that I've heard over the years, heard from you. But sometimes it's good to hear it from other people and get other people's view on it and how it yeah. works. And he's made a very you know, successful business, number of businesses for himself over the years. And now he's selling that knowledge and, yeah. and all the rest of it. But um, I think you do just keep on learning. Like you say, you don't know what so you th don't there's know. Very, there's very little new knowledge mm. out there. I mean, I, I, I read books now and, and you can actually go back into the, the, the Greeks and the Romans and say, look, this all applied back then. So really, you know, as a society, have we really change that much in you know three four thousand years you know we're still human beings we still have you know uh, a, a neural system that you know is, is is very similar 
it's just that what we need to do is see it in different contexts. Yeah. So, you know, I could read a book now and it'll be relevant and I'll pick a bit out and I could read it in three years time and pick out something completely different at a higher level that is relevant to a different situation. Yeah. So one of the books I love, which is a must read for anybody that's starting a business is The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. Yeah. Um, you know, why most small businesses fail. You know, if you knew how, why they failed, then you could do things to stop that. And that's a book you can keep going back and yeah, o over the course of your business and you'll pick something new out every single time you I've read learned it. so much from you recommending that book yeah because I'm what I'm trying to do is make myself completely redundant and and exactly, just yeah. it's where everything just runs yeah. without me not that it not that I wouldn't be here but I I could decide not to be here. exactly and, and that that's the big thing part of part of this is choices it's, yeah. it's the choice to do what you want to do you know and, and that's what a successful business actually provides for you it gives you more choices yeah, yeah. Uh, so one, once we've got the learnings in you know continual learning and uh, working then we've got to bring this into a plan okay okay so we've got to put a plan together okay so and the, and the key to a plan most people go I need a business plan and you go to your accountant and the business plan will be a load of numbers you know, and uh, it'll be 20 pages and you know, you'll, you'll do it once and then it will go in the bottom drawer and then you'll never look at it again. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it has its benefit generally if you're trying to get finance or something it's useful, but actually that's not a useful plan. A plan is something that is going to hold you accountable, yeah. that you've committed to do. So we work on 90 day planning cycles because it works quite nicely. If you've ever tried to buy a swimming costume in December, you know, you, we know that we can only really think seasonally. So spring, summer, autumn, winter. So we're now with all of our clients going through our winter planning, you know, from September through to December. You know, so really what do we need to achieve okay. uh, within that? So 90 days is far enough that we can put a plan that isn't going to be changed too much with what's going on in the world. Yeah. Yeah. But long enough that it's actually worth putting the time and effort to, okay. to put those things in. So this is... Who does what by when? Yeah. So what are the strategies we're going to work on? What's our goal? Real clarity. And we, we, we have one goal. So one goal this quarter. Okay. Because otherwise you've got too many goals. You get pulled from pillar to post. So what's our main goal? What might be an example of some goals for people out there that are just start, starting? What might a goal so, be? So a goal, I was just with, with a client uh, yesterday sort of going through their first one for this. So his goal was, uh, he's a second-hand car salesman uh, was to have 30 cars in stock okay okay so he's, he's currently around about 15 and he wants 30 because he knows he gets 30 then the sales will come from that yeah so it's specific it's measurable it's achievable it's realistic within a time frame yeah so for him that's the focus yeah so, so for, for instance somebody in our business that might be a balloon decorator yep. out there they could have a goal that okay I want to this quarter I want to get five new hotels on my books for yeah. weddings right. and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. It could so be anything really, couldn't it? Could, it could, could be, be something that, that customers don't it, see. It could be a financial goal. It could be, you know, I want yeah, five names in my book that might sort of get business for it. I want yeah. my largest client. It's it's something that again you've you know, you've you've thought about it. It's stretching. Yeah, it's yeah. not something you could do with your eyes closed. It's, you've got to go, oh God, well yeah. I might get it, you know. Um, so, so it's got to stretch you beyond. But if, if he goes for 30 and only gets 20, he's still nearly twice what he had now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so shoot for the stars. If you hit the moon, you've still exactly. escaped, escaped the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. So, so once we have that, that key goal, then we need some key performance indicators. You need to have some tracking numbers. Yeah. So if you're going to go for your, your balloon guys, I want, let's say, three hotels. Three hotels on my books. You, you need to know your numbers. So how many hotels do I need to speak to yeah, in order to get X number of meetings? Yeah. And from those meetings, how, do, how many will actually come on? And then from those people that come on, how many work, work how many jobs will I get? So those are the conversion rates. Yeah, yeah. So, so then we can start saying, well, I need to speak to, if I want three, I probably need to speak to 20 hotels. Yeah. Just phone them up send them something, you know, make connections with 20. Yeah. So that becomes our key performance indicator. How many people have I contacted this week towards my goal of 20? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because once we've got the plan, the plan then drives the action.
Okay, so without this, nothing happens. We can have the best plan and you can sit there reading and pontificating, but unless you get off your backside and do some stuff, yeah, then nothing's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. But without this, that action becomes, you know, you're running around doing all sorts of things and at the end of the quarter, end of the month, you look back and, and you haven't achieved anything. Yeah. You know? And even if you do this and you've achieved nothing, you've no results, no hotels have said yes, yeah, what you then do is, okay, so let's look back, as long as I did all, everything I said I was gonna do, yeah, well, what went wrong? Yeah, so yeah. you're going back up to, to so learn. So then it. you go back up to learn, what, yeah. what, what do I need to learn so that next quarter I do a better plan and I do better action. In fact, that's learning in itself. If you've contacted 20 hotels yeah. and you've got zero results, okay, you definitely did something wrong. What so you've learned the, from What that. were the objections? So what, what why did they say, oh, I've already got somebody on my books? Or, you know, maybe you didn't put the, the value proposition across well enough. Yeah. Maybe it takes a bit of time to build the trust up. Yeah. Okay, so maybe you need to build a sales learning, read a couple of sales books about how to make connections, how to build rapport, yeah. uh, how to present your, your offering in a better way. Yeah, yeah. And then I guess if, it, if this works and this part here, then you go back further up to goals, but you could actually review your dream, like say five to 10 years, uh, it yeah. could be quicker than that. What if you achieve what you planned in five years, in two years, and then you just have another dream, yeah. another... So, so if I, I mentioned Ray Kroc and McDonald's, and if you watch the, I think there's a video uh, film out, the founder with Michael Keaton as Ray yeah. Kroc. Oh, right, okay. Uh, so it's, it's a good one, good one to watch. Um, but, you know, when Ray Kroc, he was 58 years old when he started McDonald's. Was he? 58. Wow. So age is, age is yeah. nothing to do with being successful in business. Yeah, it's mindset. So yeah. he was a 58-year-old man but with an entrepreneurial mindset. Well, I met Simon Woodruff a few years ago. Yeah, he, and he was started your sushi at 50. Yeah, yeah. So Duncan Bannertime was late 30s. Yeah. So his ice cream van. In his ice cream van, yeah. yeah. So, and he was a beach bum on, you know, uh, a windsurfing beach bum yeah. before he did it. And he, yeah. he, he sort of sat up one day and he had a dream that I want to be a millionaire. Yeah. That was his dream. Then he set a goal, buy some ice cream vans, you know, and then learnt from that then put and so it just scales so yes every time you achieve your goals yeah you go back and you reset because yeah. the, the key to life is you know life is a journey yeah we need a destination otherwise we don't have a good journey mm. but once you achieve your destination then go on another journey yeah yeah and so the likes of bill gates and you know these guys don't are not in business to make more money yeah they don't need any they can't literally spend the amount of Absolutely, money they've got yeah. What they're in business for is for the fun of it. Yeah. They enjoy the journey, they, they enjoy the game. And if, if business is a game and you enjoy it and you're making money and you're achieving what you want, yeah, it's one of the best things you'll ever do. Life is good. Life that's, is very good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's what I find is I try, I try and enjoy every day for what it is. And I think if you're not enjoying the journey, you know, come off and go yeah. down a different road or whatever. But then I suppose, there is that within business, and that was why I wrote my book. You've written a book, I've written a book, yes, it's here, it's here. Um, only five and a half years to, to actually write it. I mean, it's probably, a, uh, it's probably a page a week, I think it probably took me to, uh, to do that. So as well as an award-winning coach, you are a published author? I am author a, now a published author, so it is available on, on Amazon. Yes. Uh, you can buy this on Amazon or at uh, the, the website for the book, which is thebigdipperbook.com. Um, but... There was a few reasons I wrote the book. One, one was back to my parents. Uh, it was a tribute to them. Mm -hmm. So the, the lead character in the book, because it's, uh, it's, on, it's on a story. Uh, right, I think so, yeah. People learn best when there's a story, they yeah. can relate to something. So it's very much on uh, the character Ken, who's my father, uh, his journey of buying a business, the ups and downs. That's why it's called the roller coaster you know, of, of business, because you know, this isn't easy. You know, the roller coaster ride is, is, is great when it's going well and then you hit the sort of the bottom and you, I know you've had your own sort of, mm -hmm. you know, where you think you're at the bottom and the world is going to end and God, what are we going to do? And then you slowly come up the other side. Yeah. Um, so you don't expect a business to be just a plain sailing. Oh, you know? absolutely. Every yeah. business person has been there has, has almost got to a point where it's all going to fall off the edge of a cliff. Yeah. But it's that dream that keeps you going. 
I think I've seen um, on Facebook or around, I've seen it somewhere, and people think that success looks like this. Yeah. And it doesn't. It looks like this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the trend, if you like, is going upwards. Yeah. But you, you go down, you go up, you go down, yeah. you go up. And that's that's just the way yeah. way it is. But, of course, the outside world, it just looks like yeah. oh. It's like yeah. they say, um, musicians and sportsmen, it takes, you know, 15 years to be an overnight success. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, I mean, there's the concept of 10,000 hours. Yeah. There's 10,000 hours of perfect practice. It's not just practice because, you know, you can practice the same thing and not go anywhere. But perfect practice gets you to be the master of something. Yeah. So, you know, if you, if you could put that to, to making balloon sculptures, you know, if I was trying to make a balloon sculpture now with no practice, I'd be rubbish at it. Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd probably be able to do a sausage dog, perhaps. Oh, it's harder than you yeah. think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is. But the, the guys that are out there that are making these fantastic sculptures, you know, if you look how the number of hours they've put into doing it, it's probably about 10,000. Now, I'd look at them and go, blah, yeah, yeah, you, you're obviously a natural, you were born to, to, you know, to create uh, balloon sculptures, yeah, yeah. but that's ridiculous. Yeah. But it's the same looking at business people. You look at successful business people and say, well, you were born yeah. successful. No, you weren't. You know, it took 10,000 hours of learning how to build businesses. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're not prepared to put the learning in when you're trying to take your business from your front room through to you know, uh, a big corporate, or whatever you want it to be, it ain't gonna happen. Mm -hmm. you know, and you can learn through trial and error, which is long, hard, and painful, or you can learn from other people's journeys. Yeah. And that was really what this book was about, was learn from other people's journeys, learn from things like this, that you, know, you look at that, it's not rocket science, is mm -hmm. it? I know. You know, it makes total sense. But when you put it down in, in, in this way, you know, it allows the brain to absorb it, to take it in, and then find your own path. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, you're, you're still going to make mistakes. Yeah, but learn from those mistakes quickly, move forwards and move on. Absolutely. Uh, we talked, obviously, a lot about big people like McDonald's, like Nike, etc. there. But this applies to everybody, even yeah. if it's just a, a one-man band, one-woman band, it applies to, to yeah. everybody. Uh, yeah. And your dreams it, don't it, have it, to be world domination. Right. It could be whatever it is you want look, to be. Yeah, if you've got a job. This still applies. Yeah. You know, to be honest, you know, most people would be better off in a job with this. Yeah. Okay. Have a dream, set some goals, learn, get better, put a plan together, and, and take action. Mm -hmm. You know, it really, you don't have to have your own business. You know, for your kids, this works. You know, get your kids. You know, kids stop dreaming. You know, at probably the age of 15, 16. You know, not because they lack the ability to dream, but because you know, parents like us go, oh, don't, you've got to be a bit realistic now. You know, I want to be an astronaut. Oh no, go, go, go to school, get a job. You know, be a bit more sensible. Yeah, yeah. You know, we as adults beat the dreaming know, out I of know. our kids. You know, and, it, and it's a shame. Yeah. It really is a shame. You know, back to my parents, they wanted me you know, go to university, get a job. Mm -hmm. you know, if my parents had been real true entrepreneurs and said, look, Kevin, you can achieve whatever you want to achieve think big, mm -hmm. what would you want, mm -hmm. you know, and we'll help you, then, yeah, no offence, but I probably wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kevin, thank you so much for that. I appreciate you coming in. That's I appreciate right. you that's sharing been, this. Been I mean, that's, that, that's wisdom right there. That it's, is. It's, it's the simple stuff that works. It yeah. really is. And, and that's really in the book, uh, this sort of stuff. That's really what's in here. It's my learnings over my life of things like this that have really helped me. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to bring all of those play things into, into place. Uh, I refer to the E-Myth in here uh, and some other great authors that have inspired me over the years. Um, so, uh, and it, it is a good read. Unfortunately, it's not on audio yet, but we'll, we'll work on that one. I know, I so. want it on audio. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, available on Amazon. Uh, Amazon and the Big Dipper book. Dot com. Dot com. And you can get it as a Kindle version on Amazon as well, can't you? It is on Kindle on Amazon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Kevin, thank you okay. so much for coming in. That's really great. appreciate it. That's it from us this week. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for subscribing and see you next time. Bye. Thank you.